Hello and good morning. Happy Friday, everybody. This is Jeremiah, and we have a webinar today on details. If you are an old hat with our detail tools, you have certainly seen the large number of improvements that we've made uh, in the last few months. So it's certainly time to reshoot this webinar and provide a really good overview of how to get into this incredibly powerful part of Land Effects. Uh, if you have not been attending these Zoom webinars, um, you know, I always mention this at the very top of your screen, there's an ability to go to view options and to exit the full screen mode. I find myself having to do that on my large monitor here. I uh, highly recommend that so it just doesn't take over your whole monitor. But of course, you're welcome to leave it full screen if you like. And otherwise, of course, notice that you've got that question area, the Q&A box please feel free to punch those in there's gonna be a lot of dense topics here and and um, get any questions answered that you might have and get things queued up for amanda so uh it's definitely we got a very full webinar scheduled here for you to go over this incredible topic but we're going to make it fun for you as well so uh, it's going to be really good so i think i've said enough here i'm going to go ahead and hand this over to amanda Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. Uh, thanks to Jeremiah for that introduction. As he mentioned, my name is Amanda Berry, and this is me. Uh, details are one of my specialties here in the office, and let me start by prefacing that I know from experience that details aren't the most glorious part of your job, but they are the most essential part. You can basically have the most inspired design in the history of man, but if you don't de uh, detail it correctly, uh, it won't stand up to time. Uh, so that's why this is important. That's why you spend as much time as you do on details. Uh, what we're going to cover today is basically um, how you can use the land effects tools that you already own to not only make the detail uh, process more efficient, but also more accurate and to a consistent company standard. That's our goal today. So we're going to cover the, the tools to actually make a detail uh, in today's webinar and get you more familiar with the tools that you'll use on a daily basis for construction drawings. Uh, these tools are not only faster than vanilla CAD, but in most cases are out of reach entirely if you're trying to draft just manually in AutoCAD. Uh, you do need land effects in order to do a lot of what I'm going to show here, uh, not just making it easier, but to do it in general. Uh, if, you, if you're wanting to take an existing detail library that you already have for your office and save it into land effects, we have another great webinar called Saving Your Detail Library to Land Effects on our website that I highly recommend. That's a great one for if you're a CAD manager wanting to start your office off uh, with this process. Uh, as for today's webinar, probably more for uh, general day-to-day -day use of the detail tools. So uh, before we basically break down the basics of the tools, uh, I first want to show, uh, do a show and tell of what's possible. So let's go over here to a mostly finished plan and we're going to jump right in. Uh, this one's going to go a little faster and we'll slow it down after this. So I've got a mostly finished plan here. I'm already starting in the detail manager. Um, I'll kind of go into a bit more into the, the ribbon up here is a, where a lot of the tools I'm going to be using are going to come from and we'll go uh, into more detail into these uh, in a few minutes. But basically I've already started calling out some details for a gazebo over here. I've already got a placeholder over here which is basically a, de a detail call out you can use to say hey I need to make sure I remember to call out my unit pavers detail once I've made it. Um, I've got a few reference notes in here, including a reference sc note schedule that I want to show details in. And I've got basically all these callouts happening, including a section callout. Um, I've linked all of these already over onto this page. 
and this page. So I've got my D1 and my D2 already going. I've already started placing details and I'll show you how to do all of that. But you can see inside of these details, they also have callouts and some are filled in. Basically the one, the details that are already placed like the retaining wall with metal railing section is already placed over here. So this detail callout is already smart and already calling that out. Uh, the ones that are empty, you can see over here on the detail manager, which is your hub for organizing all of the details in your project, you can see that metal railing callout is not placed yet. So that's why it doesn't have a location in there. And you can see 2D1 over here, 2D1, there's your retaining wall section detail that's placed down there. So everything's kind of talking to each other in this, uh, in this plan. And as you, I kind of go into more into the detail, you can see all the hatches also match. So I've got that hatch down there. It's the same scale as the hatches over here, but you can tell from some of the other information in these details, this detail is drawn at one to 20, and this detail is drawn at one to 7.5. Now I'm using a lot of, um, metric scales in here just because uh, that's where my background is from but I do want to say that every single t uh, step I do is a more general step and scale really doesn't matter because what land effects is doing is automatically scaling all of these things including all of this text all of those hatches all of the callouts with the leaders um, basically everything in here all of these details are different scales and it doesn't matter if it's metric or imperial land effects will keep track of it all you have to do is tell it what scale it's supposed to be and it will make sure all of your standards are to the correct scale on your sheet when you're going that you're going to plot and that's the important part you don't want to worry about all of that uh, so as I kind of go into here, I might want to continue placing some things. So you can see some of these empty collets. Let's see that metal railing. Let's actually place that metal railing. I can grab that. I can go to place. It's going to automatically ask me for a number. I'm going to grab that and just snap it into place. And as I go, you can see it's already filled in all of those callouts in here. So I can go ahead and just call out the last one over here great okay all of my callouts and my details are filled in i'm going to go back to my plan and you can see a lot of those callouts that might have been a little empty before are now filled in uh, this one's still not associated so let's associate that now that i created my unit papers detail i can grab that associate it Grab my unit pavers from inside my project list, same as over here. I'm gonna say okay. There we go, perfect. And maybe I'm gonna call out my that railing over here. I'm just gonna go grab a call out, grab the railing, okay. Give it an arrow point. I have some options when I'm calling out. I just right click. I have all of these to choose from. I might do more of, uh, actually, I'll just do the call out. Great. Actually, I've got to do that. Sorry. Over outside of model space. Back here. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> it didn't come with the title. Let me go back into my options. Okay, right click for options. I forgot to say include detail title. And actually I wanna include that ref note because I've linked my ref notes to my detail. And we're gonna go in and it's called out my reference note. I can go down to my reference notes and to a ref note schedule. Or actually I can go from here. I'll update that schedule, yes. It's filled in the location of all the details it knows about. We'll close that. And I'll just minimize this a little bit, there we go. 
and all of that's great. So I've got a plan kind of going and you can see how fast and easy that is. And it's even easy if you need to revise something. So if I go over to D1 and I need to move this pavers, I've decided it needs to be on D2 instead. I can just delete it from here. I'll refresh my page. It's now unplaced. Go over to D2, place it in here. Perfect. And if I go back over to um, into this page, you can see that unit pavers call out in here and also over here will have been updated automatically based on the new location of the unit pavers. And one last thing, another kind of advance once all of this drawings, uh, all of these drawings are set up, maybe you need to add a few more changes to these details and you want everything to update, I can just really quickly go to edit detail, open up that existing detail as I've saved it. It opens up the source file. I can say, add another dimension. I'll just really quickly add one in here. Save it, overwrite it, save it. Okay, I can close that. I don't need to save it. Saved into the system and hasn't updated here, but all I have to do is update my details. And we're off to the races. So that's basically how quick you can go through this. And I know that was fast, but I wanted you to see what you can do and give you some context before we go in depth so that you, as I go through all of these tools uh, and the tools that led up to, these, uh, to this state uh, more slowly, you're going to be able to fit all of, the pic all of the pieces of all of those little tools into the big picture of what you're trying to accomplish here and how fast you can go and basically a benchmark of what you're aiming for. So let's go really quickly just back to my presentation here. So what you're going to need uh, to do all of this is really simple. First, you need any type of FX license and a compatible CAD platform. So that includes land FX, that includes design FX or irrigation FX. So architects would no tend to use design FX, uh, landscape architects and designers would tend to use uh, the land FX license and irrigation designers and um, would tend to use an irrigation FX license, uh, but they all include details in, in them. And that's because details are essential to basically any construction plan. So with all of that out of the way, what we're going, let's just jump into some of the other stuff. So I will go as slow as I can to show you, and I'm just gonna go into a blank drawing. So I'm going to go to my start screen and I'm going to, I have a few templates already laid out. We have some webinars showing you how to get all of these set up if you need them. But I'm going to go into a, a millimeters drawing. If you are drawing details, I typically recommend for imperial, you want to draw your details in inches. Although feet does work, inches is recommended. Uh, if you are in metric, Again, you can draw a detail in meters if you need to, and it will scale. Millimeters is recommended because inches and millimeters tend to be the general standard of drawing details in most industries. So I'm gonna go with a blank millimeters drawing to start with. And I'm just gonna close my detail manager for right now because I don't quite need it just yet. But um, I'm gonna give you a bit of background uh, what I'm going to show you right now is a bit more advanced. So let's go over to our detail preferences. I'm going to open this up and just show you so you know what it is. Uh, for a basic user just drafting, you're never going to go into here. But just so you can see it, know what it is, and understand what it's doing for you. So this is the hub of your company standards. Uh, things in here may be grayed out if your CAD manager has locked the standards in here which is a great thing. Um, 
locking is a new feature. I totally recommend it for CAD managers if you would like to start using it. Uh, check out our documentation on that. Uh, but what you can see is that detailed template that I had on that other page, if I go back over to here, this little square size that I've got going on here is a module. And that module is going to be determined in your detail preferences in this section. So that's how big it is. If I am in, uh, if I just go really quickly and open up an inches drawing, I'll show you what it looks like in inches. Let's go into details. You can see that's what it's going to look like in inches. Basically, as soon as I change units, all, everything in here changes. That's why the units really don't matter as I go through all the basic steps and show you the tools. So that's the standard. You can change that. Your CAD manager can change that. That is a more advanced thing um, and only should be done once. I won't get, go into that uh, today but we have some great tutorials on that. This is where your details are all saved. Mine happen to be on the C drive. Yours will probably be on your network drive if you're in a large office or on your C drive if you're a sole practitioner. Um, some options over here are advanced. So I'm just gonna say they're there. I'm not gonna go into what they do. We're just gonna leave those alone. Basically everything we're gonna leave alone in here because everything should have already been set up for you. If you're just starting out and you just want to try out the detail tools, just leave them as they come out of the box and see where you go and you'll figure out what you need to customize later on. I'm going to say okay now that we can see where all of that is coming from. Uh, and what we're going to do is start to make a detail. I'm going to go back to my millimeters drawing and I'm going to just actually save this onto my desktop. So I can differentiate it from my other open drawing over here. <laughs> uh, but let's start drafting. So the first thing I want to do when I start drafting is I want some layers. So right now, all I have, I just opened up my uh, layer properties manager by typing LA in the command line. You can see all I have is the zero layer, uh, layer zero. And you never want to draft on that. So let's load some layer states. I'm going to go up here and grab my load layer state. Um, I've got a bit of a prototype. Um, ribbon going on here that I've added this button into here. You can normally find this, uh, if you have an old version, you can also find this on FX admin uh, ribbon. But let's go into layer states. I want to load a layer state with land FX layer states. I'm going to go to details, landscape architecture, great. So this is basically giving me a whole bunch of layers to start off with. They're already set to colors that match my CTB file for my office standards. They're set to uh, line weight, uh, some non-plot over here, some pattern ones. Uh, and basically what I can do is just start using some things. So I'm going to set myself to uh, 0 0.25 to start with. And we're going to go ahead and um, put in some graphics. So before I even start putting in any detailed templates or anything like that, any, um, I need to start drawing so I know what scale my detail is going to be. Uh, so I've already saved in some graphics in here and we have some uh, that come with land effects, but up here, FX details again, FX details ribbon, detail builder uh, panel, under graphics, we have a lot to choose from. So you can really start quickly building up a detail if you like. Um, you can also save some things into here. So under detail blocks, if I go into here, you can see all the categories. Uh, all of these typically come with uh, land effects when you first install it. So lots of things for you to start using, but you can also save in your own. So what I've done down here, and we have some guides on exactly how to do this that you can follow along. Just search for save detail block in our documentation and that will take you to the step-by-step -step page, but I've saved in some retaining wall blocks from a favorite uh, retaining, segmental retaining wall manufacturer. Uh, if you're an architect, you can do this with uh, all of your stuff as well, like get your favorite um, fixture, light fixtures, doorknobs, whatever, um, into there and start placing them so you can easily build up custom sections, uh, but I'm just basically going to grab uh, this piece of two section, 
standard block and we're going to say OK. And I'll just place it in here and snap F3 to turn on OSnap. And I'm going to snap it in here and I've saved it with a really great kind of snapping point. That looks great. Let's go back into graphics. I'm going to grab a bit more, grab that coping stone that I've saved in. Perfect. We've got a retaining wall started. Uh, I can now go into, I'm on this layer that I want, so maybe I just add with a polyline, PL for polyline. I'm just going to turn on ortho with F8, add a top to this, add a general bottom to this, and then maybe add, um, I'll go into a non-plot layer and add a base. And I'm just doing some basic drafting stuff in here. Let's maybe 300 back. It goes up, it goes back. Perfect. And actually, when I normally draw these areas, I like to enclose them. I should have enclosed that. I'm just going to snap along here. Quick, quick, quick. Because what I want to do is eventually place a hatch in here. And I tend to find that hatches work a lot better if I do them in closed polylines. So I've got both of those selected. I'm going to do join, join those together. It's one. It's closed, perfect. Uh, just a little tip, I always keep my properties open so it's really easy to see little details like that, like what layer things are on, yes, they're closed, things like that. So with that kind of done, I also have one more graphic that I've placed in here. I've added in some drainage pipe. So maybe I'll just grab my 100 millimeter or four inch drain pipe and we'll just throw that in there. So I've got a really basic retaining wall uh, started. I've started drawing things on correct layers. That's great. Uh, but now we're kind of into the point where I want to start um, actually doing uh, hatches, callouts, dimensions, all of that. So what we're going to do is place a detail template be because before I want to place hatches, I need the detail to know, I need the hatch to know what scale it's supposed to place at. Because like I said before and outlined at the beginning, all of those hatches ended up being the same scale on the sheet. So let's go into our templates. So again, FX details ribbon, templates. You can drop that down in case you see this icon. You want this one for placing a template around your detail. So we're going to click on that. And I'll kind of go through this step by step as to what all of this means. So remember that module at the beginning over here in preferences that I told you uh, about and how big it was? That's what that module size is. So 1A is one module size. 2A is one module high, two modules wide. 3A, three wide, one high, and it goes on from there. Two high, two wide. And this is basically the module as it will appear on your sheet. And then down here, we have a list of all of the scales you can choose. So you can choose from a list of imperial scales or metric. And if you see anything on here, uh, or if you don't see anything on here, please give us a shout and we can help you out with that because uh, these are hard coded into the system. Double check your units. Uh, it should be what you set the drawing to by default. Double check your preference set. It should be your office standard. Uh, basically, everything is already set up. Uh, but what we can do, I'm just going to start with one to one and show you what you can do. Uh, I don't need to be perfect and choose the correct one right away. So I'm going to go 1A. I'm going to start with one to one. And I'm going to say OK. And I get this little box. Obviously, this retaining wall does not fit inside the box. What I want is I want my retaining wall to fit inside the box, completely inside the box. So I'm going to use my hotkeys so I can make this bigger or smaller. And by hotkeys, what I mean, if you look down here, uh, general rule of thumb, when in doubt, look at the command line. 
it will tell you what uh, options you have. So I can go to keyboard commands or settings. So what I'm gonna do, settings is basically just going to bring me back to my page. So that's if I right click, it will do that. I wanna go to keyboard commands so you can see what's there. So I'm gonna tap the K key, which is the blue highlighted letter in there. And that's gonna open up my keyboard commands. So what I have here is, uh, this is like brand new, as in a month ago kind of thing. Uh, so we're super excited about all of this. Uh, I can basically make my template bigger or smaller uh, in terms of scale with Q and E. I can make it taller or uh, shorter in that, uh, we call it the uh, A, B, C, D section, or I can make it narrower or wider in the uh, one, two, three, four of those modules up to about four by four, uh, or I think five by five. Um, so you can also do less width extension or larger width extension. So I'm gonna kind of go through what all of those do. Let's go back into here, I'm gonna say okay. Um, and what we're gonna do, so I'm tapping the E key, that's a bigger scale. And you can see down here in my command line uh, history, it's now at one to five scale. I'm gonna zoom out a bit. So looks like I need about a one to 10 scale in order to fit everything. I also have some other options, like maybe I want a smaller scale, right? But I want this to actually take up two modules on my detail sheet. So I can make it double wide, one wide, double wide. I can make it double uh, high. That was the W key that I just tapped to do that. So this is S. This is W, so that's a two by two module. But basically, I think I'm good with the one by one, so I'm gonna go back. There we go. I could also, if the one by one, if I wanted this, but I wanted that little bit, I can do that width extension option, which was the uh, Z or Z, Canadian, so I sometimes say Z by accident. Uh, <laughs> Or I can, uh, so C, 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 and that's basically, if I go back to the very one by one, so that's 25%, 33%, 50%, 75%. I think it's 25, 75, and 0.5. I think we removed the 33s. So back to here, I really, really like the one by one. So I'm going to just go up in scale, and that's where I am at. If you need some more guidance on this, definitely check out our uh, documentation pages or just rewatch this webinar. Uh, it's gonna be recorded and posted this afternoon. I'm gonna place that just by clicking it. And there we go. So I have my one to 10 scale detail template. Everything's inside it and placed. Um, I'm gonna kind of go quickly into what all of these are, detail file, because you don't wanna delete these. Uh, these are your standard information and these are actually smart. So the detailed title is going to autofill with whatever I save into the system. Uh, this number is going to autofill. Uh, this scale has already autofilled and this detail file is gonna autofill with where you eventually organize this to. So don't change or delete any of those. Um, they will update themselves in good time. So here we are uh, with our detail. Uh, so now that we figured out how to basically create a template with our correct scale, we can now start actually placing things that require scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a hatch. Um, I'm gonna really quickly actually make a layer for myself because I like my hatches. We have some uh, 0.13, but that's a black hatch. So I'm gonna actually go in here Grab that, I'm going to copy that. I'm gonna make a new layer and call it screen. I'm gonna make a screen pattern. <laughs> already in use, I already saved it in, it's already there. Cause it uh, came in with my block. There we go. Sorry, screen, I'm gonna make that current. And I'm gonna go up here to hatch and I'm gonna put in some gravel backfill. So I like to use this uh, Earth 45, uh, sorry, not, that's uh, not the subgrade, gravel backfill. I like to use gravel dense for that. So I'm gonna say, okay. 
and we're going to plug and play it in there there and now it kind of went over my drain so what i'm going to do is grab that and uh wait for it a bit there we go perfect and i'm going to choose the select from the automatic hatch editor ribbon and i'm just going to select that block and right click to accept there we go so that's nice and good i'm going to go back to go really quick uh, back to home make current back to details and let's add a little bit of earth around this we'll do a polyline i'm going to do a shift right click to get a temporary snap window uh, go to nearest uh, we'll just go down i'm do i always like to do polylines um, while i'm kind of drawing this i'll do a little sidebar of uh, please never use splines oh especially not in a detail that's going to be a terrible idea uh, they basically always break uh, and i'm going to do another polyline because i once again forgot to close that and follow my own advice of always closing things that undo there we go Join those two together, make sure it's closed. Yes, great. And I like to put these on non-plot lines uh, just so that it's a little bit of a cleaner drawing for me. Um, and we'll go in and we'll place another hatch. So I like the backfill 45 for my existing subgrade. So I've started to get things going here. Uh, now that I've added some hatches, I want to annotate. Uh, so basically, I am going to just go up here to my detail annotation toolbar, and I have a lot of options going on here. Uh, so let's kind of go through them one by one. Um, the first thing I can do is just do a leader with text. Uh, I have some options under here. I could do my leader with text. I can just do a leader, M text, or text. And all of these are going to associate themselves to your company standard detail text style, and that should be already set up and it is set up out of the box uh, so you can just use the default and i'm just going to do this and maybe i just um, what am i going to do uh, we'll say this is subgrade put on caps subgrade great and you can see already scaled already scaled to an appropriate scale already set up by your company or yourself if it's just you. Uh, and when I'm annotating like that, I have some options. So again, command line options. I can go right click. And I have all of these options in terms of what to do for a uh, leader line, whether it has a screen behind it, whether it has a frame behind it. And we set up all of these because uh, it's really handy in terms of, I can just go with this dot one. Um, Let's put that in, test, ah, there we go. And these are all um, M leaders, so I can just grab them and move them around and that's basically why that uh, all comes into play. And then um, once I've done that annotation, I might wanna do some notes with M text. I prefer using M text or uh, leader with text for the most part. Uh, but I can also, instead of uh, typing out everything, and I'm actually just going to really quickly do a quick detour because my preference set should have set everything to white, but it hasn't, and I like white uh, text. Perfect. We're going to do that. There we go. I'm just going to set all these layers back to what I want them to be. Okay, uh, and so the other thing I can do is a uh, simple dimension. So I've just kind of go on under here, you have all of these options. I'll go with linear dimension. Um, I can just snap into here and show you how tall that is. Um, you can basically dimension anything you want, angle if I want up here, 
or sorry, angular dimension. Here we go. Grab that, grab that, tell you what angle it is. Uh, and if you want, if you put a dimension in here, you can always go over. And uh, I like to, where'd it go? There we go, fill color, set that to background, and that will block it out for you. But what you can also do, this is kind of new with uh, FXCAD 2017, I believe. Um, you can double click in here, and I'm just hitting the arrow key to go to the end of this. Uh, and I can say max, I can type in all of that. I can do multiple lines and determine how big that kind of goes. So you have some options in terms of that. I can uh, delete that entirely and just say that it is a 600 millimeter max height. There we go. And so starting to get this detail together, everything's kind of falling in place. I'm going to look at uh, some bubble callouts. So we have a few options in here, bubble callouts and keynote callouts. Um, I'm going to stick with bubble callouts for today. Keynote callouts are a bit more advanced. So with bubble callouts, they're just really simple so that you can create a schedule uh, within your detail. So I'm going to call this one, uh, we'll call this one retaining wall coping. And I'll place that. Taking off my snap. Huh. Could try that again. It uh, taking off my snap. Um, caused it to malfunction. F3. There we go. Perfect. So I've got my coping as number one. It's asking me for a schedule. I'm going to put my schedule, we'll say up here. There. So it's starting to pull together. Let's do the next one is going to be um, retaining wall standard block. We'll place that over here. And it's just basically filling in as we go along a little schedule so you can kind of keep everything together over here. I'll move that down a bit. So it's inside um, the frame. Just a really quick sidebar on that. Uh, everything needs to be inside the frame because basically if it crosses outside of the frame, it will not save with the detail. So keep that in mind. If you have a line, a very important one that you want to show and it's accidentally crossing outside, or you have, uh, you're throwing a PDF in here, uh, it needs to uh, do all that. So what else do we need to do? I've done some dimensions, I've done some bubble callouts. Another thing that I can do, I'm just gonna move everything a little bit to the side here and we're gonna try some enlargements. This is another new feature. Throw that in here, we'll move that in. And I'll move everything a little bit off to the side. But basically, if I have uh, something like a really, really high detail item over here, something like that, I'll put in a little graphic so you can kind of uh, see, let's get some metal framing. Sure, or we'll go with fasteners. Aha, uh -huh. I need a few bolts here. Um, all of that, but it's a little too little to kind of, uh, and very compact in here to uh, do everything. So what I can actually do is um, do an enlargement. Um, I might actually go to a different, detail just to show that enlargement. Let me just uh, pull up a detail that's going to show this off a little bit better. Mostly because I want you to see exactly um, what you can do in here. 
There we go, lines done, that one. So this is the one that we had started before. Um, I had shown you before. Uh, basically, if I want, I can grab this detail enlargement tool, do a polyline or a circle enlargement. And let's get this detail right here. It's going to trim the hatches. Uh, sometimes it might need a little bit more trimming, but I'll show you what it's going to do. So that's my circle. It's doing its calculations. There we go. And I've got my other circle I can put off to the side in one of my details. Uh, so basically I can go with a bit bigger and these are just the same keys we always use. So this is E is going bigger, E uh, and Q is smaller, just like that. So I can get a little bit more of a detail enlargement. We'll throw it right up here. Eh, yeah, sure here. And for the most part, it catches the hatches, uh, but sometimes it needs a little bit more trimming. But I mean, look at how much time we just saved right here. So a little bit tr of trimming isn't the end of the world. Um, I'll just grab that one in there. And I'll delete that from out of here. But basically what's the great thing about these detail enlargements, so it's already kind of showing you what that scale is over here. The great thing about these detail enlargements is that they're smart for the dimensions. So if I do a linear dimension on say this length uh, over here, so I'll do a snap, uh, this, so this is gonna be 75 right there. And if I do that same dimension over here, it's going to keep the right scale so that the, the dimension size itself, that 75, is the same text height. And it's already calculated that that is the same as over here because this is just a bigger, um, a bigger scale. So you can use that to your heart's content. It's a really amazing tool uh, that you can basically drill down into your detail a lot more easier, never picking up a calculator, and frankly, never even um, changing layers for the most part. Everything that I'm doing is already follow, uh, falling on the right layer. Let's go back to this basic detail that I did over here and let's uh, show you how to save it. So um, with saving details, there's a few things to cover with that. I'm gonna go up to save details. Again, FX details, save detail. And that brings up my uh, explorer of all the possible locations I can save a detail. This might look a little bit different than you. Again, I'm using a prototype. If you want, um, if you're used to using all of uh, the CSI master format divisions, which I cannot recommend enough, it is an industry standard, and frankly, you should be using it. Uh, you will recognize all of these. If you, uh, right now, this is a prototype. If you'd like to use it, um, you can contact us and, uh, we can get that set up. Uh, in the future though, this will be standard. Um, we already have most of these already in our current standard. Uh, so you can basically choose where to save everything based on a identified standard, or um, you can save it up under a project specific. So basically when it comes to saving, my rule of thumb is um, can the detail hypothetically be used in another project without alteration? If the answer is yes, it should go into standard details. If the answer is no, it should go into a project specific detail. So an example of a standard detail would be a fairly standard retaining wall detail where the height says 600 millimeter max height or um, that would be about a two foot max height. Uh, that's a pretty standard detail. It can easily be applied to a lot of situations and a lot of uh, drawings. Whereas if you did a uh, entry feature to a residential development and uh, that entry feature featured the name of Hillary Heights or uh, Heights residential, whatever, uh, then obviously that would be project specific and you want to drill down and save it under here. So most of those details that I saved in the other one, I saved under um, institutional, it was a library. So I kind of saved it in there, especially that that section that would be specific to a, 
specific project. Um, and this section, for the most part, was pretty, it wouldn't really be easily feasible in another project. Uh, but for a retaining wall detail, we can put it into standard. So let's do that. I'm going to go under exterior improvements. I'm going to find my retaining walls. And we're just going to put that into a precast concrete retaining wall. It's going to automatically choose a number. You can change this number if you want. I'm going to select. And we go to our detail tell. So it's, this is the new address it's going to be saved to. It fills in automatically. And that's going to automatically populate over here. Our title is going to automatically populate here. The number will populate later. So I'm going to do a detailed title of just retaining wall. Uh, I can do a drawn by, so my initials checked by Jeremiah. And I can put a description in here so I can be a bit more specific, maybe say that this is a 600 millimeter height uh, max with um, drainage pipe. Might want to be a bit more specific on that, maybe with a 100 millimeter. Basically anything in here that's important about this detail that might differentiate it from another detail that isn't necessarily in the title. You would put in your description or notes. Um, I can also automatically add this to a project if I want to, but I'm going to save that so I can show you how to add the detail uh, once you're in the project a little later. So I'm going to save that. Okay, with that saved, we're going to go over to my drawing. So I have here a, a sheet already set up and ready to place. I'm going to open up my detail manager again, FX details all the way over here, manager. You can drop this down if you don't see it and go straight to your detail manager. And I've already got some details in here. So this is your hub of the details that are assigned to this specific project. What I've already done is I've already assigned a project to this drawing for my design. And that's important and covered in a lot of our other basic tutorials. Um, but I have some already in here so I can kind of show you how things work. Here you can search through details. You can sort them by number. So you can see their number or by sheet. I don't have anything on a sheet yet so it didn't really do a difference. Um, I can also preview any of these details. So I can go over here and just see a preview and scale that up or down. So can kind of go in between them uh, and see what's in the drawing already. Um, and I can go ahead and place these. But I can also add that detail that I saved into here. So I'm going to say new. You have two ways of uh, adding details. One is new. One is import. We're going to go new. It's going to open up that library that we talked about before. Let me just pull that up so you can see it. Uh, and I had saved that under exterior improvements, under retaining walls, and there it is. So I can just grab it. I'm going to say add to project and done. Great, so that's added to the project. Uh, the other way I can also import. So I can click on import. I can go to my other project, grab any of the details in there, maybe that gazebo detail, usually maybe a standard detail like the metal railing, add that to the project. I can add multiple if I want. Uh, and all of those are in here. So you can quickly start populating these or pull from a template. Uh, I can then start placing them all. So I can either to place them, either click on it and click place. The first thing it's going to do, if I haven't done anything with this sheet yet, it's going to ask me what sheet it is. So I'm going to say, oh, this is uh, D, I'm going to call it LD1 on this one. And we're going to call it details one. Uh, details one and I'm going to ask it to rename because I accidentally named this D1 and I actually want it to represent what sheet number it is so I'm going to say rename layout we're going to go okay now it's going to ask me what detail number perfect placed it everything is scaled all on the right layer all fitting in within the module and it renamed the sheet to LD1 so I can continue going through. Another way to place them is I can just click on it um, or just, sorry, double click on it and that will activate the place function. So I can quickly just start 
placing these in my drawing. And if I go into here and let's place that here and basically as I was placing, I realized that, oh shoot, this one doesn't fit up there. It needs to fit down here. I can just double click in here, go to attribute, go to that detail number, change that to three. Okay. Go down here, change that to four. Okay. Update this and they switch. Easy as pie. Now all I need to do is I've kind of placed all of those. I can call them out so I can go to my plan. Um, I created that retaining wall. Uh, I can do a maybe just a quick section through here. So I'll go to call out, FX details, detail call outs, call out, grab that, grab that retaining wall, say okay. It wants to know which one this one is. I'll just keep the name. <laughs> okay, uh, it's asking me what I want. I'm gonna choose the section one. It's kind of a section. You can kind of do whatever you want here. I'm gonna include the detailed title. We're just gonna cut through like so. Voila, detail call out, all smart and everything. So you can go ahead and move that around wherever you want and it will follow along. So um, now where we're at is we've called out, we've placed, um, we can basically start doing a few more advanced things because we have a little bit of time and then we'll uh, get on to uh, some questions. But really quickly, what we can do is create a few schedules. So um, let's do let's do a legend. So if you say have a this say this is a um, a title sheet and you want a legend of all of these sheets that you've done, uh, what you can do actually is go over to we'll go over to FX admin, we'll go to manager. And here's all those sheets that I've started to fill out into this drawing already. I've told the system are in there. Um, what I can do is actually do a legend here. I'll put that in the drawing, upper left-hand corner, and suddenly we have a legend going on that you can put on your title page. Um, you can also go into there, into your manager. Again, sorry, this is FX Admin Manager. Uh, this is your hub for everything to do with the uh, with this project. I can actually grab these and drag and drop and move them around so that if I do my legend, uh, you can customize how that shows up. You can also do a legend for all the details in this project. So say you have a template going on or you want to know everything going on in this project as a manager, uh, you can ask the drafter to basically go in here and run a report, or sorry, I'll just run a report from here. Drawing, I want place details and unplaced details. I want to know when it was saved, who it was drawn by, who it was checked by, and the notes. Uh, I can order by however I want. Let's do it by sheet. And there we go. We have, this can also be exported to a spreadsheet if you like. It's all drawn by me. It's, this is when they were all saved. These are where they're from. So you can quickly start seeing, oh shoot, you used the wrong unit papers. You were supposed to use unit papers 02 out of here. Uh, that's basically what you can do with that. Um, and then again, uh, another more intermediate thing is you can start taking all of these details uh, and you can start linking them to reference notes, you can start adding them to templates and just making everything click. Uh, all of this can be a lot faster once you start uh, using the import more. So the more projects you have going, the more you can use import, the faster things get. So that's about everything that I wanted to cover today. Uh, let's move on to see if we have any questions. We absolutely do. Uh, we had a good number of questions that uh, Jake and I actually got all answered, but you know, really the, the answer to a lot of them 
um, is indicating your other uh, detail webinars. Um, so I wanted if, if you could maybe pull it up on uh, your website. Absolutely. This one definitely fits in well with those other ones. Um, you know, basically, as you can imagine, uh, where it seems a lot of people are is in getting going um, with this and getting their existing details um, saved. Um, and so there's some other webinars that, that address that. Um, and of course, uh, we also have our uh, new detail trainer video series, which is uh, coming together in the next few weeks. But that webinar right there, save at the very top, saving your detail library into land effects would be a fantastic companion to the webinar you're watching right now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once you kind of get through all of that, if you're, you just want to do things even better, um, I recommend detailed tips and tricks. I basically give you some ideas of how you can better organize uh, the plans to make it look a lot more professional, clean and tidy, and just concise and easy to read. Great. And uh, were there any other questions then that we wanted to cover or are we good to wrap up? I think you can go ahead and wrap up. Perfect. Okay, so uh, basically what I wanted to kind of cover in uh, all of this, I hope you guys got a lot out of it, but uh, to, to drill down the top three of why you should be using the details and why you should not be doing things manually. Um, basically, the detailed tools in LandFX, all of these, first of all, help you organize and find all of your details in the detail explorer in here you can customize this to organize it exactly how you want to and that is a huge tool for any any organization um, i i cannot recommend enough against the the kitchen drawer of details saved anywhere uh, the third one or sorry second one is uh, auto scale so as you saw in all of these details as i went through all of the text is automatically scaled all of the hatches are automatically scaled and the details automatically scaled onto this sheet and all in a, just a few clicks so you i never had to pull out a calculator and divide anything so that's a really powerful thing and leads to a lot less errors. And the third one is enforcing your office standards. Uh, all of these tools just work together with all of those preference set settings to make sure everybody on, in your office is doing things the same way, using the same layers, using the same hatches with the same font, all at the same size. And that way your plans start looking more consistent and you start looking a lot better in the eyes of your clients. So thank you everybody for joining us today and if you ever have any questions feel free to reach out uh, and definitely make use of those webinars, all of our power tips and our documentation pages.